Hi students, good morning everyone. Welcome to a new topic. Today we are going to discuss about uh, second element of new economic policy that is privatization. So in this uh, topic we have to analyze what is the meaning or definition of privatization? What is the need of privatization? What are the measures, uh, objectives of privatization and the measures of privatization? So only four simple uh, analysis. First of all, let us analyze what is the meaning of this term privatization. Privatization, if you analyze the meaning, privatization is the process of involving private sector in the ownership or operation of a state-owned enterprise. It is the involvement. Involving whom? Involving private sector. Where? Where they are not involved before. In a sector where those sectors, those individuals are not engaged. There. Means the area where government. Means the public sector area, private sector was not there. In such areas, such industries, we are allowing private individuals for the operation. Or the ownership. Operation or ownership. Is it? So operation is different. Ownership is different. Is it operation or operation means only running right ownership means the entire outright okay that is the these are the things that is one aspect of this privatization in second aspect we can see that we can define privatization as the transfer of a function transfer of a function or uh, an activity or an organization from public sector to private sector from public sector to private sector. So means that transfer of a function or an activity or an organization from public sector to private sector means either the function we can we can privatize or the activity which are engaged. So part by part or fully we can change the ownership. So means that so it uh, indicates a new culture in the production sector. What is the new culture you know? In this new culture we can see that uh, uh, in society, it necessitates some concepts that is marketization. So private sector is not like public sector, totally different. They are focusing on marketization of the products because their first and foremost aim is to maximize profit. That is why marketization is the concept and competition in the market, cutthroat competition. Means they are competing each other to gain maximum profit from the industry. Competition and efficiency in production. Efficiency in production means uh, if the unit is not efficient in production, definitely either they will change the production module or they will adopt some changes because whatever it is that that sector need profit. They need catch in the market. They have to catch the market. For their products. Is it? That is why they will compete each other. They will compete each other. So all these things are the guiding principle and the decision making motives behind this private sector. So through this principle only private sector is working. But these principles are unfamiliar, maybe unfamiliar to the public sector. Marketization, competition, efficiency. Is it? That's the problem in this regard. So anyway, this uh, privatization is not a new concept. When we read the economics, uh, history of economics, we can see that uh, in the year uh, 1762, I think, uh, Adam Smith mentioned regarding privatization. And uh, when, he's, uh, when he wrote a book in the year 1776, I mean, he wrote many books. And among the books, this first one in book kind of books, which is uh, which, uh, written by uh, Adam Smith, is considered to be very good books. Uh, and uh, some uh, modern books for economics. The name of the book is a little bit lengthy. That is an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation. So simply we can call it as wealth of nation. So in that analysis is focusing mainly capitalism, wealth of nation. Capital system means privatization, private existence of private individual. So in this book also we can see the uh, importance uh, which uh, was given by him to the private sector and existence of this private sector ownership and or in capital sector sector anyway so in uh, short privatization means that uh, the gradual withdrawal of the government from the from their 
existence. Gradually, not fully, gradually, slowly, government withdraws. He said that is, we can call it as the privatization. So, the privatization can be obtained uh, in two ways. There are two ways of obtaining privatization. One, it is that outright sale of the government enterprises to the private individual. Outright sale of government enterprises. Outright means 100% giving the ownership to the private individual. Total sale. There is no government interference there. Second thing is that uh, there are some uh, joint ventures. <laughs> Means that both the private sector and private, uh, public sector, they are working simultaneously. Share, share, hold, like shareholders like that. The private sector also there. Public sector is there. But the government is the lead having the more share in that. 51% of the share will be owned by the government. Means government controls the sector, but private individuals are also there. Yeah, they are having the share at all. From such industries, government withdraws. The withdrawal of the government from these joint industries. So, once again, we, uh, first of all, outright sale. Second one, withdrawal of the government. These are the two ways of privatization. So, I think you understood the concept. Second thing, we have to analyze regarding what is the necessity of this uh, privatization. So, when we analyze the need for privatization, Simply or directly we can say that uh, privatization it is as it was essential due to the poor performance of public sector units in India due to the poor performance because uh, during 90s or at the end of this 80s private sector became a social liability to the government social dead weight to the government social liability means Government was, uh, government, it became a headache to the government to run these public sector units. Such a way it became. So let's see. So we can see that uh, when we see the five-year plans. So in India, five-year plan, uh, it was set up in the year 1950, planning commission. And uh, who was the chairman of the planning commission? Prime minister. Now there is no planning commission. Now it is Niti Ayog that we'll discuss in our uh, other topic. So this planning commission set up and first five year plan started in the year 1951 to 56. It gave emphasis for the agricultural production and because the shortage of food grain was the major issue during the time, poverty. So then second five year plan we focused on industrialization. In that industrialization also we gave more priority towards this uh, public sector units. It's clear. And second thing, second point we have to note in our, note it down that in the, in, uh, during uh, that second five year plan period, we gave, we prepared an industrial policy resolution, a policy matters for the smooth running of the industries. There also we gave emphasis for public sector units. Means public sector units were considered to be the temple of India. We have to consider them like that, the industries. Because uh, those industries, they are bringing uh, what we can say bread and butter to the nation. Such a way, nation's wealth can be accumulated. That was the target. Anyway, we gave our emphasis for the public sector. But uh, uh, the, that time it was better. But when we are coming to the 80s of that one, situation became very bad. Though we compelled, it, that situation compelled the nation to rethink about the uh, structural change. Whether it is required or not. Is it? And third thing is that almost all the public sector uh, their operation was, maintenance was not done properly. Even if government is giving uh, more share in their each and every plan and all, that the money is not used properly for the betterment of that sector. And finally, government is, even if the, uh, the uh, Navaratna status is also given, finally we decided, the government decided to uh, change the ownership. That was the privatization. These are the needs of privatization. In the second five year plan also we can see uh, and moreover one more thing is that when the government moved from first plan to the second plan people also shifted their emphasis from agriculture to industry see the people are also showing more emphasis in this sector means their mindset also towards the development of nation that was there is it that also we have to uh, highlight the point so these are the necessities and finally there was no other option to survive for this some sectors so government decided to uh, give the sector to the private individuals or the private sector so okay, these are the necessities then third we are moving to the objectives of privatization there we can see uh, mainly two objectives we can uh, point out that as the objectives 
First one is that to increase the financial setup of the nation. How can we increase the financial setup of the nation? Because the nation are already there, we are having fiscal deficit, huge fiscal deficit that we discussed in our previous class. And all these things, uh, uh, financial setup was not good. So the government decided to sell some uh, share equities in the market of some industries uh, in the internal in the local markets, in the internal markets by which we can accumulate money. That money we can use for the development of that industry as well as the development of the other industries also if we are getting more. Second thing is that the performance of industries. Uh, they can increase the performance of the industries by giving more uh, efficiency in production, good quality in products and all. So it is there also we can maintain the status. In such a way, these are the two main objectives. What are the objectives? First one, increase the financial setup of the nation. And second thing is that the performance of the increase improvement in the performance of the industries. So in order to obtain these objectives, uh, there are, we took uh, two major measures. Is it? Main, two, there are two measures are there the, for the privatization. So when we analyze the measures of privatization, we can uh, say that uh, there are two measures are there. One is that the disinvestment and second one is the policy of Navaratna. One is disinvestment and second one is the policy of Navaratna. So disinvestment, it is very essential. It is very important. Disinvestment we mean it is the sale of some shares portions of shares of some industries uh, it was under the control of the government to the private individuals for the accumulation of money so it's clear so it is investment it is the sale of part of the holdings held by the government means share of the government those, those share were held under the control of the government that share it was given to the private individuals not fully some amount of the share 20 percent share 30 percent 10 percent share 5 percent share like that it should be given to the private individuals is it and so that money we can use for the uh, to settle the financial deficit or fiscal deficit of the nation or to improve the efficiency of the existing private sector uh, in the same sector or other sectors also is it it was done this disinvestment was done using two methods one minority sale minority sale and second one strategic sale once again minority sale and strategic sale so what is meant by minority sale minority sale we mean keeping the share how much share is having uh, with the government government uh, keeps 49 percent share so government is considered to be minority in the category and major shareholder is the private individual so if the start in strategic sale 51 percent share will be held by the private individual minority sale government keeping only government may have only 49 percent share so 49 plus 51 100 percent share correct and second thing is that in minority sale this is managed by the government while in strategic sale, it is managed by the private individuals. Management, it is given to the right is given to the private individual. Where in strategic sale. And it is done through this uh, sale, this business is done. The, uh, taking over the company, ownership is done through bidding. Bidding of the units. Such a way we can cover. These are the two methods uh, coming under the disinvestment. Is it clear? Then we are moving to policy of Navaratna. So policy of Navaratna we mean, uh, it is giving some weightages, considering the performance of the sector in the economy, some weightages to some industries. And uh, Navaratna, see the word is, came from the Urdu, Navaratna, Navaratna. Navaratna means nine precious stones, means what? So as we are going by, when we are going to the history, we can see that. In the history, in the court of Vikramaditya and court of Akbar and all, we can see uh, now these nine jewels. They are known as nine jewels in their court. Uh, how can why they are called? Uh, they call them like that now nine jewels. They were the very high of uh, people having rare wisdom and uh, special knowledge in uh, all those matters, and they were the guests of that palace. The palace where they were the people, those who were 
advised the king in their rule and all and they were the invited guests from different parts of the uh, country also is it uh, especially we can see this uh, nine jewels in the court of uh, akbar as well as in the court of this vikramaditya and in this court of vikramaditya uh, many were there uh, i don't remember all the names kalidasa was there uh, then uh, varaja muni was there and many were there those people were the entire wisdom of that uh, area and now you know that uh, uh, vikramaditya was the ruler of ujjain now ujjain is where Uh, Ujjain is now in Madhya Pradesh, I think. So he was the uh, that area. The he was the ruler in his court. Those people were there, and they got more priority there. The same way in Akbar's court also, uh, people were there. Abul Fasel and all. Uh, then uh, many were I forgot their names. So all these people were the people having highest rank in this court. The same way when we analyze our Indian industry also, we gave some highest rank for some industries. those industries are coming under the category of policy of navaratna so only navaratna is it actually navaratna is it so in this category uh, government categorized on the basis of their performance and share in the markets and all these industries into three categories one is the navaratna second one maha navaratna and third one mini navaratna navaratna maha navaratna and mini navaratna These are the these are the three categories. So under the Navaratna category, the big industries, major heavy industries came under the category. I'll tell you two few examples. We can get more examples from the textbook. One is that Bharat Electricals Limited, B E L, Bharat Electricals Limited. Second one is that Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Is it? And third one, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. BPCL, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, and HPCL, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. All these industries were considered to be the first categories of nine industries coming uh, con considered as to be the uh, Navaratna industries. Second category, Maha Navaratna, also uh, some industries also considered as to be Maha uh, Navaratna. Also, is it? There are also nine industries were there. Uh, MTNL. a steel authority of india all are coming under the category of maha navaratna and a third category mini navaratna there are also six uh, industries were there uh, around 62 industries were considered to be mini navaratna and they are having special operational right and financial autonomy and all they got the more support from the side of the government also in order to run the industries like that uh, bharat sanjar nigam limited uh, airport authority of india aai BSNL etc. All are considered to be mini Ravanetna and all. He said all these are the uh, industries also. And recently, recently in the year 2020 January, government uh, updated or revised the uh, schedule of these Ravanetna uh, industries once again. As per these schedules, we can see in India Ravanetna uh, industries are uh, mainly now uh, there are. Uh, Nine industries are there. Sorry, fourteen industries are there now in uh, Navaratna category, and around ten industries are there in Maha Navaratna category, and the seventy-four industries are there in uh, this Mini Navaratna. In seventy-four means sixty-two in first category and twelve uh, in second category. Is it? So means that these industries are the major kind of industry industries coming under the category of this one. So let us sum up the class. So uh, once again, we have to study the meaning of privatization, and uh, after that we have to study the need of privatization, and uh, then third one we have to study the objectives of privatization, and uh, in the objective we have to focus mainly the measures uh, also, and then we have to study the measures also. In this measures we have to study. disinvestment and policy of navaratna so thank you for watching the class and uh, study these points once again and uh, let us sum up this uh, now this covid 19 is spreading all over the world so let us break the chain thank you for watching the class